Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Welcome back, wildlings. Now, no one likes a home invasion, where that place that you've always thought of as safe and comfortable is all of a sudden neither. Well, that's something no one should ever have to go through. But, if there's one thing we know about the world of horror, it's that things can always get worse. Tonight's tale, Investigating a Bump in the Night, by Dead and Spread. I woke to the sound of someone moving around downstairs and shot up quickly in my bed. I did my best to remain perfectly silent as I sat with the blankets pulled up around my lap. I strained to hear if the noise that had jostled me from my sleep was going to continue. A few minutes passed, my body filling with an uneasy tension as I reached over to the nightstand for my phone, but quickly realized it was still sitting on the coffee table downstairs. The sound came once again. My dog, Torgo, whined from his spot on the floor and finally lifted his head. A dim moon shone through the window, and it was the only source of light, but Torgo's eyes were reflecting it back at me in the dark. How did I hear that before you? I angrily whispered to him from my spot on the bed. You are supposed to be my alarm system. Torgo bent his head to the side and made another little whine as if to say that he was sorry. Throwing the blankets off, I grabbed my jeans from where I'd left them on the floor. I'd just finished buttoning them when the sound came again. Torgo was now on his feet, standing next to me. I wasn't sure if he was coming along as backup or thought that it was time for walkies. His tail wagged fast and his tongue was hanging from his mouth. Reaching down, I gave him a scratch behind the ears and he nuzzled my hand. Oh, you are one seriously fierce guard dog, ain't you? I slowly crept across the carpet towards my door, being careful to be as quiet as possible. If there was an intruder in the house, my hope was that I could get the jump on them before they even realized that I was awake. Torgo trotted along beside me, and despite the fact that he wasn't exactly an attack dog, I was happy for the company as my fingers wrapped around the handle of my bedroom door. As the darkness of the hallway came into view, nothing seemed to be lurking, so I slipped past the door and made my way across to the hall closet. I rummaged around in the dark, trying not to make too much noise, and wished for the first time in a while that I was into sports. A baseball bat sure would have come in handy in this situation, and my options boiled down to either a mop or a broom, both with plastic handles and a few spray bottles of watered-down cleaning solution. Grabbing the broom, I slowly shut the door. Torgo tilted his head at me. Well, the linens aren't going to do much good if we run into a burglar. You work with what you have. I whispered to the dog as if he understood me and was making judgments. The sound came again and startled me. It seemed to be coming from the living room. Torgo finally seemed to perk up, his body going stiff as he stared down the hallway towards the stairs. I gripped my green plastic broom with both hands and walked slowly and softly towards the source of the noise. It felt as if my heart was thundering in my chest as I reached the top of the stairs and looked down. A sudden realization washed over me that I looked about as threatening as a kid at play. The game was Ninja Turtles, and I got to be Donatello! I steeled myself and started moving again. As I reached the third step down, I realized that Torgo had stopped following me, and I could hear him growling low in his throat. I turned back to see him standing fixed at the top of the stairs with his eyes laser-focused on one spot at the bottom. His mouth kept twitching, and he was baring his teeth ever so slightly. 
he finally looked like something had gotten under his skin. I looked at where he was looking, and my eyes had adjusted well enough to the dark that I should be able to see whatever he had, but there was nothing there but shadows. My attention was drawn towards the living room again, and as I turned to look, I noticed something small dart just inside my peripheral vision and run towards the kitchen, which was in the opposite direction from the living room. Torgo came sprinting down the stairs to give chase and nearly knocked me over as he ran past. I had to steady myself on the banister. He skidded when he took the last few steps in one jump and then vanished into the kitchen. I started down the rest of the steps to go after him, but now he was barking furiously. I cleared the last few steps with a jump, just like he had. But as soon as my feet touched the ground, Torgo's barks became suddenly replaced with a mix of growls and whines. I quickly rounded the corner with my broom raised and ready to strike. I believe my response at that time was, The fuck? I stopped, dead in my tracks, when I saw the things that had swarmed my dog. They were small, no bigger than a foot in height. They looked humanoid, but each of them had a similar spindly build. Their skin appeared to be inky black, even darker than the room around them. Four of them were crawling all over Torgo, biting him and digging into him with tiny little claws. When I stepped forward, though, I noticed that there were even more of them lining the counters, and they all looked at me with eyes that reflected dimly in the moonlight. Torgo let out another whine as one of them bit into his back leg. I rushed forward, kicking it off of him with my bare foot. It squealed as it slid across the linoleum and struck the cabinet beneath the sink. Another let out a screech as Torgo finally caught it in his mouth and bit down on its midsection. I started using the broom to try and knock them off his body, but I heard a hiss as a box of cereal fell from the top of the fridge and spilled its contents out onto the ground. One of the things suddenly leaped down onto me from where the cereal had once sat, its tiny claws like needle points sinking into the skin of my cheek as I attempted to throw it off me. The pounding sound continued from the living room as I finally pulled the wriggling little creature from my face. It bit into my finger as my hands wrenched down on its torso, and finally it let out a wretched little death screech as I snapped it in half like a twig. A hideous mold smell filled the air as its putrid blood spilled down over my fingers. I felt bad for Torgo since he'd bitten one of the things in two. I could only imagine the taste. Each of us having killed one seemed to have caused the others to back up. They stopped swarming Torgo and started to once again line the cabinets and fixtures, their shining eyes fixed to us as they chirped to each other and made little calls that reminded me of monkeys. Torgo went to rush forward again after them, but I grabbed him by the collar just in time and started to pull him from the kitchen back towards the bottom of the stairs. My mind was trying to come up with some kind of exit strategy, but both options seemed terrible. Option one was the back door, which was on the other side of the kitchen and past all of the little creatures that I was currently thanking God had backed off. Option two was out the front door which was through the living room where the thumps were coming from. It sounded again as if on cue. I turned around to face the dining room behind me and would need to go through there and then the living room to get either my phone or get to the locked front door. Letting out a heavy sigh, I started to drag Torgo in that direction as I didn't feel like chancing myself against an army of angry little monsters. It made me feel even more boxed in as I noticed that the horrible little things were following us. They slowly crept through the kitchen as we backed up. Each step we moved away, one would dart forward a little too far, and Torgo would snap at it with a growl. <laughs> Why, I guess you're not such a bad guard dog after all. He looked up at me with his big brown eyes and I smiled. He was a good anchor in this sudden sea of insanity. We backed into the dining room and I turned around. 
There didn't seem to be any of the little monsters in there at first, but then I saw a couple of them hiding under the table. Torg barked at them and wrestled against my grip on his collar. The two screeched in response and scrambled past us to join the others who had now made their way to the area at the bottom of the stairs. Come on, boy, I said quietly as we started walking towards the living room and the source of the dreaded thumps. My heart was still beating so fast that I would have passed for a hummingbird in the moment. Torgo had started to growl before anything was even in view, and that was anything but a good sign. When the living room finally did come into view, regret hit me. My decision to try and leave by the front door had been the wrong one. The entire floor seemed to be covered in a thick, wriggling mass of darkness, and standing with his back to us at the far end over by the door I could see some kind of black cloaked figure that stood at least six feet tall. I watched as it raised a fist and slowly slammed it against the wall three times. On the final hit, I watched in horror as more of the little creatures started to emerge from the walls as if they were being birthed from the shadows themselves. They fell from their place of origin and joined the writhing mass on the floor. The mass on my floor was the creatures themselves, hundreds of them. Slowly, we began to back away. My choice of direction had clearly been a mistake. Always stick with the devil you know. I pulled at Torgo's collar again, but this time he came with little resistance. Even he knew when too much was too much. We hadn't made it a few steps when one of the things from behind us suddenly leaped onto my back, gritting my teeth in pain as it clawed into my shoulders and sunk its teeth into my neck. I gripped it by its tiny little head and spiked it onto the hardwood floor of the dining room. My foot came down on it heel first, as hard as I could, and it let out the most horrendous squeal I'd ever heard in my life as its life was crushed from its body. I touched my bleeding neck, feeling the sting as blood trickled down the back of my shoulders. I looked down at Torgo, who was suddenly backing away all on his own, his tail tucked between his legs as he did. Looking up towards the living room, I realized why. Hundreds of reflective little eyes were staring at me now. The sight of all of them nearly froze the blood in my veins. The cloaked thing standing at the other end of the living room was hanging its head back over its shoulder. Beneath the shadow of the cloak, there were electric blue glowing eyes in the shape of rings and a gaping maw filled with blue light. Its face was equal part entrancing and nightmarish, lurid with bright lights like some kind of deep-sea fish. The cloak thing let out some kind of howl that shook my bones, and suddenly the mass of creatures on the floor started moving toward me. There was no longer any choice to make as I turned around and sprinted for the back door, Torgo following right at my side. The ones from the kitchen leaped forward as I did my best to barrel through them, ripping them off of me as they attacked. I flailed against the swarm of creatures, doing my best not to let them slow me down, and at my feet, Torgo was doing the same. I finally made it to the kitchen and saw Torgo run out ahead of me, clutching one of the little bastards in his teeth and shaking it around, tearing off another that was sinking its teeth into the meat of my thigh. I ran over to knock another off Torgo's back with the broom handle. The door was only a few feet away, and once more I grabbed his collar and moved toward it, trying to swat away each new attacker as I did. Just before we could reach the open air, the back door was suddenly wreathed in shadow and my blood went cold. The cloaked thing from the living room stepped out from the new darkness and wrapped its long, thin fingers around my throat before I could even react. It stared into me with those ringed eyes of blue, its void of a mouth seemingly threatening to swallow me whole. It felt like my throat was in a vice grip. I tried to wheeze air into my lungs and prayed that I wouldn't die staring into that endless blue hole that was the thing's mouth. The smaller creatures had once again lined the counters, 
They chirped and screeched as they watched their master squeeze the life from me. Just before things went black, though, the cloaked creature let out a howl and its grip around my throat loosened. Torgo had sunk his teeth into the creature's hip. It reached down and grabbed my dog by the scruff of the neck, tearing him free. Torgo's mouth was covered in that putrid black b blood, and the cloaked creature screamed in pain as it tossed my dog into the waiting pack of screeching little creatures with him. The cloaked creature once again reached out to grab me, and I swung that broom at the thing's head in a fit of pure rage. I watched as the plastic handle shattered against its skull and those gnarled, thin fingers once again found my throat. As it started to squeeze, I heard Torgo still fighting among the monsters and tightened my hold on the broken, jagged plastic broom handle. I stabbed it into the cloaked creature's neon blue eye and I heard it let out the worst screech yet. It backed away quickly into the shadows it had created and vanished with a parting hiss of pain and anger. I turned and saw Torgo trying to dig his way free of the mass of little creatures still covering him and attempting to drag him down. I reached in and grabbed his collar, pulling. Finally, Torgo came free and I pulled him into my arms, knocking the hangers on back into their pile. I stumbled backwards towards the door and yanked it open as the creatures advanced toward us once again. I practically leaped through the back door and into the night. I fell hard onto the back porch, Torgo spilling from my arms. I expected the things to swarm me as I lay there, but instead I was suddenly awash in light. The motion sensor, the, the light on my back porch, had come on. The little creatures stood there at the precipice of the door to the backyard, hissing and screeching, terrified to come into the light. They backed away, and suddenly the door slammed shut on its own. Inside, I could hear an all-too-familiar sound resume. I looked over to my right and saw a pair of reflective eyes in the shadows. I started to scramble away before I noticed that it was just a raccoon hiding behind the garbage cans. <laughs> oh. I collapsed on the back porch and felt Torgo come over and start licking my face. I smiled as I reached up and scratched his chin. Good boy, I said. Very good boy. Well, I always tell people to know who their friends really are. And you really can't do better than that pooch back at home. So stay scary, my wildlings. <laughs> always know who your friends are. And make the most of your nights. <laughs>